There's a smiling face. Has to be a St. John's fan. Watch Bowen now. Rubbing off Michael Jordan on the pick. Number 20, posting back up inside. Showing where he wants it. An excellent feed here from Stewart. Jordan trying to front, gets caught short. Mullen up in traffic, avoiding the charge some way. He's some kind of player. All right, just a minute ago, Allen throws up the shot, comes back in, out wrestles the entire front line of North Carolina for the follow up and puts it in. And that's pretty much the story. The front line of St. John's has dominated both boards. St. John's leading 18 to 12 with seven minutes to go. And they have Mullen again underneath goes up and has it. Chris Mullen with 12 points and he's right under the basket waiting for those tremendous passes. Peterson to Smith. Peterson from the corner. Rebound Allen. North Carolina's not getting a second chance. This is Glass with the ball. Now Mullen is out. And Mullen's performance on that of the Redmen has this crowd roaring early at the garden. You can hear him in the background. St. John's is up by eight points. Matt Doherty is the fourth man to try Chris Mullen. So far, it's oh, been to no avail. Trip that time. Lou Karnasek is smiling. Where's the foul, says Lou. Accidentally. He, he went over Peterson's leg. It was not an intentional trip, but trip he did. One of the few things that hasn't gone Chris Mullen or St. John's way this evening. Matt Doherty. Outside is Brad Doherty. Peterson. Smith in the corner. Tight Redmond defense. Perkins has come out. Middle lane is open. This is Perkins. And as he moved in, the whistle. This is North Carolina's first appearance in the Holiday Festival. Foul by Stewart, Stewart on the foul. First personal foul. And St. John's has six. Make that the second for the Tar Heels, the 24th for St. John's. And they've won the uh, festival two years in a row. Six festival titles altogether. the Tar Heels last appearance and their only other one here's Jordan for Peterson 2012 the score followed by Jeff Allen, Allen second, second foul, foul. It's one one on the Michael Jordan in and out of the lineup Dean Smith trying to get his ace pumped up and playing from North Carolina's vantage point five minutes and 55 seconds you're down eight and you're great player and I say that without uh, I hope not overusing the word great hasn't given you anything Perkins on the follow-up the last time these teams met 82 St. John's winning by four in overtime and the first meeting we alluded to St. John's won by two in the holiday festival so they've been playing close games missed by Stewart this is Kenny Smith bounce pass Matt Doherty gets it back and it's Jordan. Follow up. Matt Dowdy, the pass knocked away by Glass. Picked up. St. John's coming down two on two. Mark Jackson gets out of the traffic to make sure his team can get set up. Folks, what we're seeing here is inspired basketball. Not always pretty, but they are some kind of going at it. Great, great defense. <laughs> 2014, five minutes to go, first half. Knocked out of bounds, it will be the Redmond's ball. Again, the Carolina coaching staff on the officials. You don't see that very often. Perkins is 10 points for North Carolina. Here's Mullen, hits! Chris Mullen is 14 points. In fact, Mullen has equaled the Carolina total all by himself. It's 22-14, Redmond. And the last one was over Michael Jordan. Doherty tried to cover him. That was a cameo. Perkins. He was slapped at, double dribble as he tried to get free. And once again, St. John's takes over. They lead 22-14. And they've got their fans screaming. Four and a half minutes to go. First half of the ball game. 
for a sold out crowd at Madison Square Garden. Mullen shoots, hits. Chris Mullen does it again. He has 16 points. He has outscored North Carolina in the first half. 24 14 St. John's. And he's doing it against a very, very good defense. Missed by Matt Doherty, grabbed by Perkins. Kenny Smith, Jordan. Under four minutes to go in the first half. North Carolina floundering a little bit right now. They need their horse. They need for Michael Jordan to get hot, pick him up. Perkins over to Smith on the rebound, and Smith puts it in. When a team's going through a stretch like this, that's when you need your leader to take it over. Get you back on the beam, get everybody in the game. So far, that, that kind of play hasn't been forthcoming. It's been all the red men. Jackson, good pass to Mullen. Mullen will go, rebound, Jordan. Oh, take it away. Mull oh, slipped. And now Mullen is up in front of the field, but the pass is intercepted by Matt Doherty. Mullen is after him. And the whistle on the play as Mullen came in to try to get the ball back. <laughs> look at the look at this smile. This is what you call cardiac action. Even when the ball's going east and west from side to side with people diving after it, it's exciting. And that puts St. John's over the limit. Carolina is used up there six. Now Thompson comes back in. Perkins leaves. Hale's going in. One factor now, the bench of North Carolina, which has just been gradually turning over as this first half has been in progress. St. John's not quite as deep, not turning over as much. This may be a factor in the second half. Uh, but for right now, I don't blame Luke on the second for not fooling around too much with the combinations. One of the things about substituting a lot is that it's difficult to build continuity. And right now, St. John's is hot, and Louis staying with him. Bob Antonelli, number 44, has moved in as Mullins has gone to the sidelines. Matt Darity makes the score 24-17. free throw followed by a timeout so we have three minutes and three seconds to go in the first half st john's leading 24 to 18. you're watching college st john's band with lots of air lots of enthusiasm chris mullen number 20 gives it up slides to the baseline against the trap the double teaming north carolina team mullen faking like he's going to the hoop pulls up goes over the top of matt doherty He's like an eel, inside, outside. Doesn't look like he's going anywhere. It's a pace, it's a killer, and the stroke, classic. Mullen has gone seven for 11 so far. St. John's with a six point lead under the three minute mark to go in this first half. Oh, the miss by Stewart, he was in there though. The ball goes out of bounds off Antonelli. The full court pressure that time by the Tar Heels. Got the quick shot. It was a very good one. Should have gone. Tar Heels went more up tempo. A 24-18 uh, game is not the, the tempo that Dean Smith likes to play. Shot by Jordan. Michael Jordan from Wilmington, North Carolina. It's his first. Jordan's. Go ahead, Bucky. First field goal, and they're only four down. Not all that dim in terms of prospects for North Carolina. It's 24-20. Jackson, Hale is on him. Antonelli, double team. Jackson, double team, gets it over to Antonelli. Pressure defense by Carolina. There's a travel, and the defense paid off that time as the Tar Heels get the ball. The Tar Heels is back. Mullen is back. And Feigenbaum makes his first appearance. Mike Feigenbaum, number 42. Luke on a second now going deeper into his bench. The intensity out there, both of these teams just really going after it. 
each coach trying to make sure that players he may need as the curtain comes down on this one at least have been exposed to the action. Kenny Smith back. Here's Jordan with the jumper. Jordan. Oh, two in a row by Michael Jordan. Now North Carolina trails by two. He may have missed the training meal, but I think he just got a wake-up call. Two straight. And this guy can change in a phone booth and turn a game right around. Glass. Rebound Perkins. Jordan feeding. Good call for Doherty. This is Perkins. He can hold the left or right. Yep, he went back with the right hand that time. North Carolina can score him in a hurry. Luke on a second. The ball game. Very cool. Keeping his point. He'd like to go down at the half, and they've got to get the ball to Mullen. It's Jordan Mullen. What a matchup. Carolina's now scored 10 points in a row to tie the ball game. They were trailing 24 to 14. It's now 24 24 with 40 seconds to go in the half. Luke Arnaseka would like to call a timeout with only three. He's trying to conserve it for the second half. It appears St. John's is going to go for one. Now we're under half a minute. This is Glass feeding Jackson. Shooting. That wasn't the one, but the Red Men will take it. Red Men lead with 15 seconds to play in the half. give you the countdown as you see how Carolina's playing it for the last shot. We're at eight. We're at five. Here's Jordan almost losing it. We're two. Here's Smith at one. It is too late. He shot after the buzzer. The Redmen take the lead at the half. They go to the dressing room leading by a score of 26 to 24. So well, here we go now into the second half. St. John's leading 26 to 24. They have led 24 to 14. Carolina came back to tie the ball game. The Redmen have taken the lead as we move into the second half of play. Mullen has been outstanding. He's gone seven for 12. His 16 pace St. John's. And for North Carolina, Perkins is 12. He's the leading scorer for the Tar Heels. One of the keys. For North Carolina, Brad Darty is 0 for 4 from the floor, 0 for 1 from the foul line, has yet to get a rebound, and of course, he was a dominating force in Tuesday night's game in getting by Iona. Had a great night, maybe a career high. So we can change from game to game with rapidity and in dramatic fashion. Moses is back in that point guard spot for the Red, the number 24. Mark Jackson played a key role in the first half. This is Moses. And as he goes in, it's Weddington after the ball. Perkins has it. This is a three-on-one break. Matt Garrity and Stewart went over on the play for the Redmen, and the foul is committed. Well, Michael Jordan started that with a sensational defensive play. Luke Karnasek is still looking in disbelief. Followed by Ron Stewart. Stewart. We missed the block, but it was all created by that man, Michael Jordan. Perkins throwing the outlet pass. Good bounce line pass to Matt Darty. Matt Doherty on the line. And that's the transition game that North Carolina wants to get going. Not happy at all with a 26-point, 24-point half. They want to be playing in the 70s and 80s. And that's not easy to do against the Redmen. 26-25. The competition for control of the tempo will be very crucial here in the early minutes of the second half. And St. John, keep under control. Here we have full court man pressure. Mullen again underneath the basket. He can't throw the long pass from there. So North Carolina can come all the way up and take lots of chances without being afraid to get burned. Matt Darity is guarding Chris Mullen and staying right with him. This is Moses with the ball. Now we have a switch as Jordan goes over on Mullen in a switch. It won't, Stewart. It won't be long before Allen comes into that front court to join Weddington, and they match up the two big men. Mullen and Jordan is on him. And the interception, you can see it coming. But as the ball is kept in bounds, it's taken back by the Redmen. Otherwise, it would have gone out. Mullen lob pass to Stewart. He fakes, he shoots, and misses. But he was fouled underneath. Chris Mullen made that 
pass from almost the intersection of sideline and midcourt. And he's got Michael Jordan right on him. And you really have to be concentrated. Look at that, right over the top of Jordan, over the top of the good Carolina defense. Good pump fake. Darty again, a little short, a little late. Not having a good night is Brad Darty. He committed the foul. Ron Stewart is up the line. This ball game is tied at 26 points apiece. And it still is. Not much emotion from Dean Smith. Now the Redmen, 27. North Carolina, 26. Barely on the way in the second half. Jordan gives the Tar Heels the lead. He's got six. And the pressure will be relentless from the Tar Heels. They're going to do everything they can to force St. John's into another tempo. Traveling. Well, with that one-point lead comes the momentum. And right now, it's wearing a light blue jersey. Dean Smith having a few words. 23rd season as the Tar Heels head coach. At the other end of the floor, St. John's. Not a passive man for man, but a sloughing man for man. Perkins with the lefty hook. Carolina now leads by three. Carolina bench, you can see they stand up and applaud when one of their teammates on the court gets off a good shot like that. Carolina with its biggest lead. Look the at the trap. Ooh, Ooh, did you see that? Coming out of the trap, an offensive foul by Stewart. St. John's wants a timeout, Bob. They gotta have it. It's getting away from them. Good call by Luke on a second. So Stewart on the foul. And you're watching college basketball from Madison Square Garden. Use of energy now, no crash later. St. John's with a good timeout. Luke Conaseca wanting to get control back. Let's see if he if he was uh, able to do that. Very difficult to do against North Carolina. They force you. The foul. Stewart's fourth. And he leaves the ball game ball as ball Allen comes Stewart. in. Two in, a, two in a row on Stewart, the, uh, the foolish foul just before that timeout uh, where he was frustrated by the pressing defense. Good substitution. Now this is the team with the two big men. Oh, Perkins getting the high pass. The alley-oop and putting it in. This is the St. John's team with the two big men that made the good surge in the first half for the Red Men. That gives Carolina a five-point bulge at 32-27. to 27. Mullen. Over to Allen. And Brad Doherty scoops it back into Smith. Kenny Smith, Matt Doherty. Oh, he travel, no call. Here's Mullen. St. John's looking like they were going to run, but uh, slowed it down. Allen hits. Just the fact that they pushed the ball up the floor suddenly and unexplainedly left uh, Carolina unawares. Nice 10 footer, unmolested. 32 29, Carolina. Jordan rebound. Mullen grabs it finally. Chris Mullen, number 20, the franchise. Smith on the way through, reached out on the hole. Well, this crowd now getting behind North Carolina, who came out strong. You look up at the clock, you get the feeling North Carolina is dominating. They're up by three. That's all three. So this is going to be a second half of ebbs and flows with two teams that are both capable of streaking on you. Mike Moses, the junior. Here's Glass, short, scooped back in, Brad Dowdy. Jordan on the miss, Mullen with the ball. 
picked up by Kenny. Kenny Smith goes over to Glass, and Matt Doherty now picks up Mullen. Mullen. That's the most natural physical matchup on the two teams. Now on a switch, Brad Doughty goes over to help out. Pass, shot by Wennington, rebound, Jordan. In the corner is Smith, that's he shooting. Bench stands up to applaud as the Tar Heels now lead by five again. Here's Mullen sandwiching in between, shooting short. Mullen goes up, whistle on the play as he went down the lane to get his rebound. Popson re-enters the lineup for the Tar Heels. Followed by Kevin Smith, his third first foul. Dave Popson Chris Mullen, is, I mean, he's, he's rebounding both boards. He's bringing it up against a very tough press. He's shooting from the outside. He's following his shots. It's an incredible display, and he, he never seems to be breaking a sweat. If there was ever a guy to look like he was playing in a tuxedo, it's Chris Mullen. His numbers at the end of the game are just astounding. Wennington, blocked by Popson, grabbed by Smith. His last foul was his third, and they say that Smith was on the line. So it's St. John's ball. They trail by five. Those of you who watch officials closely, remember now these three officials came from the Big Ten, a neutral conference. This was part of the arrangement that uh, Dean Smith and the University of North Carolina wanted to come in. And it takes away any alibi. It's the turnover, fast break, Jordan goes up. He's got it. Right right 36-29, North Carolina. Timeout, St. John's. St. John's calls a timeout. Luke Karn a second. You know, Brad Dowdy was one of the top contenders the other day with 22 points. A contender for MVP. So far, hasn't scored in this game, Bucky, with four shots. And Chris no, Mullen, of course, is also a contender. Well, that, Chris's performance tonight has done nothing to diminish that. Brad Dowdy uh, lost 15 pounds from last year. He's a much better center. He's going to be assertive, but you have to give credit to Weddington and Allen in the front court. They've done a job. Moses feeding. However, that ball was deflected by the Tar Heels, so it goes over to the St. John's Redmonds. Perkins for Popson. St. John's is now facing an emotional Michael Jordan, as opposed to one that's been sleepwalking for almost three halves here in New York. And now he's bordering on awesome at both ends. Perkins leads the Carolina scoring with 16. And Mullins is 16, but has not scored yet in the second half. Under the boards, all by himself, Jeff Allen makes it 36-31, Carolina. Luke Arnseca only has one timeout left, so any more streaks by the Tar Heels are really going to put him in a bind. They've been effective using the twin powers in there, Bucky, earlier. Yep. This was the lineup that got him the 10-point lead in the first half. Glass and Moses. Look where they're being picked up now, just as they come across. Except for the early moments against Columbia, or against Missouri, uh, North Carolina has not trailed. Oh, what a pass! Weddington went back for it, got behind his man. Mullen just threaded the needle. Beautiful play, 36-33, Carolina. The dimension of Chris Mullen that most people don't appreciate is a superb passer. Matt Darity baseline, feeds, and it's taken by Moses. This is Glass putting it in. St. John's trails by a single point. Luke Arnseca looking pretty good after that timeout. Six straight. Called on that play as Carolina leads by a point. Jeff Allen committing his third. Fourteen fouls for the Redmen, three for the Tar Heels. Wennington going against Brad Doherty. Wennington, 
as you can see, hopping mad. Well, Allen on the uh, little temper tantrum on the last one, Wennington on that one. <laughs> Bill Wennington going over, shaking hands with the official, saying, ah, just blowing off a little steam. So it went out of bounds. Perkins. Back door goes Matt Dougherty. And the tap in by Brad Dougherty. But they say no basket. It was on the rim. Dean Smith making uh, no motion here. All right, Dougherty back door is Chris Mullen. Turnabout is fair play. The ball is up soft on the rim. Yeah, that's a good call. That ball was within the cylinder. That is basket interference. Carolina leads by one. Mullen picked up by Jordan. That was off glass. Looked like it was intended that time either for an alley-oop play or to go in the hands of Allen. But it didn't get underway. Here's Perkins. We've got some talking in there among the big men. That was a, that was a response. Matt Jackson taking the role of Moses. That was effective in the first half. He's directed a double team and it's taken away. Here goes Jordan. <laughs> However, there was a whistle on the play prior to Jordan going in. That was a good foul out front. Had there not been a foul, Michael Jordan would have brought the roof down. Jackson on the foul. 38-35. Peterson. Glass on Jordan. Jordan feeds. Peterson shoots. Rebound. Mullen. Jackson. Weddington on the right. Allenton now changes places with him. Hale now. One Mullen. Mullen posting up underneath. Double team leaving somebody free. Jackson trying to see who it is. And he's surrounded. Loses the ball. Picked up by Carolina. We'll have a held ball on this one. Jackson having a few words on the sidelines as Brian Mahoney and Luke Carter second one. Oh, I thought they had a five second violation, Bob. He, uh, the double team was very effective. And the thing that was crucial about it is that North Carolina didn't slap and grab and, and let him off the hook with a foul. They just kept good pressure on, sealed off all the other outlets. Dean Smith said, yeah, we had him. Should have had a five second call. As it was, they got a jump ball and the arrow going their way. 38-35, Tar Heels, 11-30 left, second half. They keep working patiently for the shot. Perkins. A lot of traffic under the boards. Wennington was the one who came in and commits the foul. Perkins doesn't match up well with both with Allen and Weddington, but the last few times he's shown extraordinary quickness in close quarters, making a good move in traffic down the baseline. One of the problems right now is that there isn't much pressure on the ball for St. John's. They're able to feed that post to do almost anything they want at will. Normally the St. John's defense puts more pressure on the ball. They come off the weak side. They don't usually contest the passing lanes, but they usually give you a hard time when you got the ball, making it difficult for you to find the open people. And maybe they're a little tired. 39-35 with Perkins there. Carolina works for their shot patiently and great marksmanship. The best shooting percentage in the country over the last 17 seasons. And they're 59% this year. An extra man. Mullen feeds. Allen won't go. Allen has it back. The tap put in by Weddington. 40-37 Carolina. While it was a fine pass by Chris Mullen, I, I believe if I were Lou Conasek, I'd rather see him shoot that 15 footer and try to force it down the end of the big man. Three-second violation. 
Out goes Peterson. In comes Michael Jordan. Here's the foul problems, you can see. And Allen and Williamson with three, those two big men in the middle. That could be costly if it continues. Well, we're basically in the last quarter, though, and I think they'll keep playing with that kind of intensity. There'll be no slacking off in this one. That's tenacious Tar Heel defense, particularly when they team up as they do in that trap. Wennington inside low is Allen. Jackson, but there's a double dribble. Once again, the defense pays off in a worried Luke Carter second, shouting out a few words. Well, he was upset. Uh, Wennington got forced out. Give credit to Carolina's defense. It made Wennington come out into the backcourt to handle, and then no one could get free. He used up his dribble, and they really put it on you. Once you pick up that dribble against North Carolina, you have to work very hard for the outlet. Wennington couldn't find it. Jordan feeds. Matt Darity misses. Perkins rebounds. Alex Allen went over. He bumped into him. And that occasions the whistle. His fourth. Decision for Luke Karnaseka. Does he stay with the two big men who are playing so well? One and one at the line. He's going to come with Ron Stewart. Allen goes out with four fouls. Stewart also has four fouls, you know, for St. John's. Perkins on the line. One and one. Carolina has but three team fouls. Of the key players for North Carolina at 65%, he is the highest foul priority, which shows you again how solid they are. 76% is a team. Five-point lead. North Carolina 42 and St. John's 37, and we're at the midway point of the second half. Jackson against Hale. With that pressure, there's no thought uh, of really attacking it and going to the basket by St. John's. They just want to get it in, give it back to the guards, and set up. A block shot that time as Perkins leaped up to swap it away. Here's Brad Dougherty. And this time it's Winnington against Perkins and a foul by Winnington. Sam Perkins has a simple game plan. Use my quickness, get free, and go to the hoop. He is playing as well as I've seen him play in a long time. Watch the block. Here comes Perkins from the weak side. A classic. He not only blocks it, he puts it right back in play to the guard. Now we're coming to the other end, and as he has been for much of the second half, unstoppable, either scoring or on the free throw line. So Perkins back to the line where he's been spending a lot of time. He blocked that shot by glass, and for Weddington, he also has four fouls as does Allen and Stewart for the St. John's Redmond. With nine minutes and 37 seconds to go, zone may pass through Luke Karnaseka's mind. All three of his prime big men with four fouls. He may try it just for a few minutes. Luke Karnaseka has no love affair with the zone, however. Carolina up by six as Carolina presses Jackson. The run and jump by the heels in the double team. Glass spinning. And the foul committed. Wennington. This special ECAC Holiday Festival edition of The Vault, Michael Jordan, North Carolina, and St. John's will continue in a moment. The new American motorcycle. When St. John's beat them in the previous game last year, they went just 14 for 30 at the free throw line. So putting those free throws in to make some difference. Here's Mullen. And it was tapped by Allen. It was forced back in the basket. Well, after each timeout, St. John's has responded well. The last time they ran off six straight. If they can do that this time, they're very much back in it. Down six, seven minutes. 10 seconds to go, and in that tip-off classic, North Carolina had the lead and went cold. 
Perkins. 27 points for Perkins, including nine for 10 at the free throw line. And this Perkins is really this is the tactic they used in Springfield last year. And it backfired. Smith to Doherty. Matt Doherty now is in No sign of going to a slower tempo. It appears North Carolina happy with their momentum. They're putting the ball up on offense. One three one zone on defense. Early in the game in the first half, as Mullen gets it up, won't go for Mullen in the second half. Here's Feigenbaum blocked, and as it comes down, it's Smith. Smith. Smith goes up, puts it on the play as Mullen is after him. That play right there, Bob Wolf, is, in my opinion, the reason that he's starting. If you put North Carolina under a microscope and say, okay, I know they're a terrific team, but is there any place they're even a little bit soft? It is speed. Kenny Smith is starting as a freshman because of this dimension. There's the block by Michael Jordan. Now watch him hit the afterburners. Say goodbye. He splits four white jerseys, soars, and it takes a Chris Mullen foul to keep him from laying it up. That dimension right there is the reason that he started ahead of Buzz, Buzz Peterson and uh, Hale, in my opinion, because of that one thing. He can fly. And North Carolina just lacks just a little quickness. Without him in there, when North Carolina plays that 1-3-1, one, one, they will cheat it heavily to the good shooter. And Perkins, he goes either way. Left to right makes no difference. Floor right now. A little difficult that time for Jordan to get through. I'll tell you, Dean Smith showing a lot of confidence in his team. With the steady players like Doherty out of there, he's got, uh, he's got Popson and Wolf, two freshmen in the ball game. Watch the quickness now. Michael Jordan, who has not had a stellar tournament, showing that explosive ability. And guess who? Our freshman, Mark Jackson, who not only throws his body around like he has a fair at the offensive end, he gets in front of Michael Jordan. So Jordan from Wilmington, North Carolina. Makes the first, misses the second. It was Jordan's 17-foot jump shot, which won the NCAA back in 1982. Cecil Exum, Cecil Exum, Cecil Exum number 50, coming in as Michael Jordan goes out. Jordan at 11 points, we're down to 37 seconds. And here is the MVP, Sam Perkins has won the nod. I'm sure he got a great deal of tough competition from Chris Mullen, but it's Perkins with a tremendous performance, 31 points in this game, plus the rebounding and all-around defense. Well, we didn't have a vote in it, Bob Wolf, but I'll say this, he played one half in this tournament and I don't think he deserved it. And I'm a, I'm a Sam Perkins fan. Peterson. And that's how it will end. As Carolina has won the game 64 to 51. The number one team in the country. Despite a gallant effort by St. John's. Just a two point difference at the half. And certainly two great games by Chris Mullen have come out on top. So Carolina. Now is a record of 8-0, and the Redmen have a streak of eight wins of the Garden snapped as they get their first loss of the year. They're now 8-1 and one for the season. The capacity crowd out here to watch this game, so stay with us for more from the Garden. Final score, 64-51.